What is good, everybody? Welcome to an Epic My Damn Toys video. Today, I have your SmackDown Live full show review and results for you guys. You guys already know how these videos work. We're going to run through the entire SmackDown show, letting you guys know everything that took place on the show, give you my own personal thoughts and opinions on everything that happened on the show. Was it a crappy show? Was it a good show? Was it somewhere in between? What all happened? I'm going to let you guys find out, and I'm going to let you guys know exactly what took place and my personal thoughts and opinions on everything. Coming into the show, I was not expecting much, to be honest with you and I don't think I got much anyways. But let's dive into Smackdown on Fox and find out what happened here tonight. So the show does start off with Miss TV. Now, I don't know why the exposure on the camera is so damn bright, but you know, it is what it is. Miss TV opens up. Their guest is Jeff Hardy. They break down a highlight video of his past, you know, his arrests and his demons and Sheamus and cutting him down and all this good stuff. Miss says Jeff Hardy is his daughter's favorite wrestler, but he does not want her to be disappointed again and yada, yada, yada. Cutting him down. Miz and Morrison kind of playing with him, cutting him down. Jeff Hardy doing a good job of standing his own, you know, giving himself sort of like motivational speaking here, building himself up up, talking about his redemption and things of that nature. I thought the promo package was really damn good, especially if Jeff Hardy can come out of this on top. I'm just worried that he won't. I'm very afraid that they're just going to treat him like trash, kick his butt out the door just like Matt Hardy, and then we'll see him turn up somewhere else. But basically, Miz and Morrison cut him down, and they say they need a bar fight with Sheamus and a handicap match with alcohol and Sheamus versus Jeff Hardy. Jeff Hardy says that Sheamus wants to put them up to this. It was good promo work by Jeff here. I actually enjoyed this segment. A lot of people hated it. I, I for some reason, loved it. I don't know. I just like the realism in it. But Jeff says he wants a match with one of them and says that one of them got to get hit in the face because they came out and disrespected him to his face. So there's got to be a fist laid in one of theirs. I thought that was a pretty good line right there. Jeff takes them both out, tears up the Miz TV set, and then we get a cut to a commercial. Back from commercial, we get a Jeff Hardy versus Miz match. Decent little football match. You know, Jeff Hardy and Miz going back and forth. Out of nowhere, Sheamus would come onto the big screen. So Sheamus comes onto the big screen. He's at home. You guys can tell that he's like at his house and and he's uh, pretty much drinking a beverage. He's drinking a cold one in front of Jeff and he's saying, you're missing out, bud, you know, drinking the drink. And he's like kind of, you know, cheesing him and, and kind of mocking Jeff Hardy with the beer in the cup right there. So then Miz comes from behind and tries to roll up Jeff Hardy. Jeff Hardy counters it and one, two, three, Jeff Hardy does win and, you know, Sheamus is pissed off that he won anyways. And I'm very glad that Jeff did not lose on this BS, man. That would have pissed me off. I'm glad that he actually won this match. Does it mean very much? I don't know. We'll just have to see where we go from here. But hopefully Hopefully Jeff Hardy can continue to string together some wins and they can build him up and it's not just setting him up to get kicked out of the company and look like a total jackass. But I enjoyed this opening. I enjoyed the match. I think this is probably the best part of the best part of the show because after this it just plummets. After that, we cut backstage, and we have an interview with Cesaro and Shinsuke Nakamura. They pretty much are cutting down the New Day, saying they're sick of the New Day, and they're going to be the new tag team champions, because our main event tonight is a SmackDown Tag Team Championship title match between the New Day and Shinsuke and Cesaro. So, uh, they're basically just cutting down New Day and talking about how they're going to become the new tag team champions. Good promo work here by both guys, and uh, that was pretty much this segment. Next up, we have a match that I swear to God I've seen about 552 times over the last few weeks, but we have a women's tag team championship match. I think it was a championship match. It may have been a non-title match, but it is Bliss Cross Applesauce. They attack Sasha Banks and Bayley on the stage, leading to a match here. They're supposed to have tag team action, so that's what we get. I swear to Jesus, man. I just, I do not want to see this match again. I feel like I've seen it so many times that I'm over seeing this match. I do not care. For what it was, it was not a bad TV match or anything like that. I just am over seeing this match, man. You ever get, like, I just don't want to see it again, you know? Or at least at least it needs to be a while before I see it again. But Bailey Doe Straps and Sasha Banks do retain after using the ropes to get the leverage on Nikki Cross, and they do retain or whatever. They they get their championships or they win the match. Regardless, they win. You know, they win. They they're still the champions, whether it was a title match or not. They're still your champions. I don't want to see Bliss Cross Apple Sauce getting another match with these guys, whether they cheated or not. I feel like there's nobody in this tag team division. It was the whole problem with having women's tag team championships in the first place, man. There's not enough women to fill out the division. You need to focus on your singles division, get that up, then focus on your tag team division if it calls for it. If you have enough women, enough tag teams, enough of that, and they don't. So the women's tag team division and women's division as a whole totally suffers because you thought you wanted new tag team belts for no reason. Next up was a total waste of time. We had a replay of the match between Braun Strowman and Firefly Funhouse Bray. Not the Fiend, but 
Bray Wyatt taking on Braun Strowman from Money in the Bank. A matchup we already saw a couple months ago or a month ago or whenever at Money in the Bank. This wasted like 15, 20 minutes of the show and I compared it on Twitter. I wrote out there, I said, you know what Brad, I guess on the ne next episode of Vindication, I'm just going to show you Hell's Gate matches and call it a day. I mean, that is just lazy, bro. Come on. I know you got to fill out some time, but you couldn't have these guys cut some promos on each other or something or, or even a highlight package would have been better. Like I can stand, like a highlight package or, or highlights of a match or, you know, a nicely edited clip together with some great pro promo editing and stuff is completely fine. But just cop and copy in a match and putting it on your show is just terrible. I know they've done it a million times this year. I understand it to an extent with the pandemic stuff, but I don't know, man. On a two-hour show, I don't think there's much room for full matches like this. I just don't think it's a good idea, especially for SmackDown. Monday Night Raw probably can fly. It's probably better to show past matches instead of putting in filler garbage for no apparent reason reason, but I don't think it works for SmackDown. Next up, we have an interview with The New Day, so it's basically the opposite tag team, talking about the same stuff, talking about Shinsuke Nakamura and Cesaro, and talking about their matchup in the main event for the SmackDown Tag Team Championships. Very good promo work by both guys. It was actually very good. I think Kofi did a great job. Big E did a great job. I was actually uh, buying into this match. They were selling me because of how good both teams were selling the promo work, and I was actually looking forward to this main event here tonight. Next up, guys, I shit you not, we had a karaoke competition between Lacey Evans, Dana Brooke, Naomi, Tamina in a fatal four-way karaoke match. If I if I call myself right, Lacey Evans sang Jeff Jarrett's song, Dana Brooke sang the Honky Tonk Man song, Tamina sang Triple H's song, and Naomi sang Dusty Rhodes' song. And this was just garbage. Just not good. None of them really sang. They sang with the, the track playing, so you could still hear them singing on top of the actual song singing. Pretty sure in karaoke, you're supposed to just play the instrumental. I could be wrong about that. I'm not a karaoke enthusiast, but every time I've seen people do karaoke, it's just been the instrumental, and then people sing, but this this was complete garbage, okay? I think it was Jay or Jimmy. I can't remember which one. Whichever one is not married to Naomi was the one that was the host of this thing. They declared Naomi the winner, and then Lacey Evans attacked Naomi from behind, leading to a matchup in which the whole thing got thrown out because Tamina ended up getting involved and disqualified this match, I do believe. There may have been a finish, but I, I could have sworn that I saw Tamina make this thing a DQ. And I don't know, man. This is just a step backward for the women's division, man. I, I just don't see, like, why not have, like, a number one contendership for Bailey's title or or some? I don't know. Just do something. There's got, there had to be something else you could have done instead of a karaoke competition here tonight on SmackDown. I just do not buy it. Not entertaining. Just not, I, I don't want to see karaoke in wrestling, bro. This wasn't it. Next up was an interview with AJ Styles backstage, and he is next week going one-on-one -on -one for the Intercontinental Championship with Matt Riddle. So he will defend the championship against Matt Riddle next week on SmackDown. Very hyped for this match, man. I can't wait for this one. I am going to be glued to my TV for this Matt Riddle match, so you guys can look forward to next week's review as we will cover that match in the main event of SmackDown. At least I hope it main events. I would love to see that. I think both guys are going to tear it down. Their first match was good. This matchup should be even better, and hopefully they give these guys time to do, uh, go out there and do what they want to do. But Matt Riddle versus AJ Styles next week for the Intercontinental Championship. And last but not least, guys, we have the main event, the SmackDown Tag Team Championship match between The New Day versus Cesaro and Shinsuke Nakamura. And this was a damn good match, man. I think that these guys were all over the place, had some good back and forth, some great reversals, some great counters. I think that uh, I think it's probably going to lead to probably a tables match or some sort of Extreme Rules match at Extreme Rules because at the end of this matchup, after the bell, they ended up getting DQ, which I thought was really Really weak because this was a great TV match, great TV tag match right here between all all men involved. And at the end of the match, it's like neither guy could uh, get on the apron, so they got so carried away they were just all beating the hell out of each other. So the ref decided to call it. I didn't, I wasn't a fan of the finish, but I guess it protects both teams heading into the pay per view before we get what we got or for, before we get whatever we're gonna get. But after the match, uh, Cesaro and Shinsuke stand tall. They put Kofi and Big E power bomb off the top rope through a table, which makes me think we're going to get either a tables match, some sort of TLC or Extreme Rules or some garbage like that at Extreme Rules. And it's a match that I'm probably going to be looking forward to because the chemistry in this match was great. I thought all four men brought it. It was entertaining.
entertaining and it was a great way to end the show. Shinsuke and Cesaro stand tall at the end of the show holding up the tag team championships and it was uh, it was a solid ending. So the show started good for me, ended good for me, but everything in between was garbage. So I would say it wasn't that good of a show. You had a lot of filler, you had a lot of stuff that just was not intriguing. The show to repeat match, we had crappy karaoke, we had a rematch that we've seen a hundred times and that's pretty much it outside of the Miz TV segment with Jeff and their match which I enjoyed and then the the main event with the tag team championships which I enjoyed. But that does it for your Smackdown Live review guys. I had a ton of fun reviewing the show for you guys. I don't enjoy really sitting through the shows all that much because most of the time they're just repetitive formulaic garbage but I do enjoy getting on here giving you guys my thoughts and letting you guys know everything that took place on the show but I'm getting the hell out of here guys. Thank you so very much for watching. New video dropping in the morning regarding San Diego Comic Con so stay tuned for that. Follow me on Instagram and Twitter at MyDamnToys and I'll see you guys in the next video. Thank you.